Hello everyone, hi and welcome everyone to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Uh, watch the video till the end and also if you are new to this channel then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon. Friends, today we have a topic which is uh, for discussion, it is depreciation. Something that is related to in income statement as well as the assets. See, as we have indicated over here in the picture. Well, uh, depreciation is a part and parcel of any asset. Like, you know, after any usage, depreciation has to be deducted. Like every company or a firm, you know, they manufacture some sort of goods or provide some services. Like companies like Apple, LG, and there's a company like Pepsi. They manufacture goods, right? Uh, like, you know, mobile phones, electrical goods, uh, beverages, you know, whereas like company like McKinsey, JP Morgan, and so on and so forth, they provide various financial and other service to the uh, to the consumers or the, to the customers. So goods and services are provided by the company with the help of what? The plant and machinery, right? And uh, computer and software and other kind of assets. So all these assets that human have a finite lifespan Some assets can last for, let's say, for five years, while other assets may last for, let's say, 10 years and so on. So just like human whose health starts deteriorating as he grows old, in the similar way, output delivered by the asset starts diminishing with the passage of time. So to put simply, this reduction of the value of the asset is known as depreciation. Now, in accounting and finance, depreciation refers to the method, you know, it is allocating the cost of a tangible uh, assets over its useful life. So there are various methods for calculating the amount which we will see later. Let's get a brief understanding of how it works with the help of the following illustration. Let's say there's a company X that has uh, that, has, that starts its uh, machinery uh, manufacturing of beverages in the year let's say 2016 and it has bought uh, some machinery which is uh, costing 10 million and uh, the plant supervisor Mr. Trevor uh, has conducted some technical feasibility of the bottling machine and he believes that it will last for 10 years with no salvage value. So what should be the amount of the depreciation that should be charged every year in the books of accounts? See, for simplicity, let's assume that the plant will perform evenly throughout its economic life. So the bottling machine, which costs you 10 million estimated life of 10 years. So the debt amount that is depreciation for the each year is going to be the cost minus the salvage value. The cost is 10 minus salvage is zero divide by the number of year, which is 10. So that gives us 1 million as a part of depreciation for each year. So the company will charge 1 million each year till 10 years. That will give that will finally suffice your 10 million right so at the end of at the end of the 10 year the entire cost as you can see the entire cost of the asset would have been charged off and hence we can see that you know depreciation is a systematic allocation of uh, the cost of uh, tangible assets over its useful life i want you to understand what are the causes of depreciation first you know any sort of uh, physical deterioration or wear and tear you can say that see an asset are used and, and their their performance and quality being to decline now physical deterioration is also caused due to you know non-judicious uh, use of the asset and when the asset is used the wear and tear also takes place from like you know erosion or dust decay and so on and so forth so exposure of assets to forces of nature like wind rain sun also forms an important factor for causing physical deterioration and wear and tear so no matter how much care or precautions is employed by its users, it is impossible to preserve the original form and the quality of the asset. Second is the obsolence. Okay, obsolence is the second thing. Now, uh, obsolence means, you know, becoming outdated or obsolete. Now, we live in the age of technology. When a new technology emerge, they emerge within a quick span of time. So new and improved technologies make the old products outdated. And we can see that, you know, what the launch of iPhone, you know, everyone is, everyone must be aware about iPhone 7 has done to its predecessor called iPhone 6. So iPhone 6 has been rendered, iPhone 6 has been rendered uh, obsolete by iPhone 7. And old machinery thought, though in good shape, may be rendered obsolete by the introduction of the new technology. Third is the inadequacy. Well, inadequacy refers to, you know, inability to use the same asset 
uh, due to the growth and the change in the size of the firm. But the company, the company which manufactures 2,000 units of mobile phones, will have to employ new and improved machinery if its sales increases to 10,000 units. The fourth is the accident. To err in, like I mean, the error is in, in human, and and when human error it, it causes an accident no matter how much precautions and quality checks are employed by the company some accidents are bound to happen so all of the above are the factors you can you know that highlights the reason which causes depletion in the value of the asset so the depletion in the value may happen in one year or gradually throughout the economic life of the asset to record this decline in value of the company makes provision for depreciation every year so there are various methods for calculating the amount We'll look at some of the prominent ones. Uh, the first method is called the SLM, that is the straight line method. Now, this is the simplest and the most used method for calculation. The illustration, you know, one that we had done that was uh, from the SLM method that depicts the straight line method. And in straight line, a constant depreciation amount is charged every year. Corporations have to estimate the residual value, you know, which represents the value which the company expects to recover at the end of the useful life. So the formula is the cost of fixed asset less the residual value divided by the useful life right there are some of the implication that you know the first one is that you know there's a predominant accounting method it is a predominant accounting method of depreciation in us and other countries it results in increasing the rate of a return compared to the actual uh, rate of return over the life of the asset the fixed uh, there's a fixed constant cash outflow over the useful life of the asset and the fourth one you know simple to understand and the second method is we have is the double declining method the double declining method of depreciation it is also known as you know an accelerated method of depreciation and in this in this method the depreciation is double of that the straight line method however it is slightly more complicated than the straight line method there is a third method that we have is the unit of uh, production depreciation method. In this, the unit of the production method, depreciation is charged according to the actual usage of the asset. So this is similar to like the SLM and except for that, the life of the asset is estimated based on the activity driving the asset, like, you know, the number of machinas, the number of setups, the number of unit produced and so on and so forth. So depreciation using the units of production is equal to, you know, the number of units that have been produced in a given year divided by the total number of units that have been produced during the entire life into the cost of the asset. Right. Uh, there's a fourth method method also that is the sum of years, sum of years digit depreciation method. Well, the sum of digit method is also an accelerated method of depreciation. Most of the depreciation in this method most of depreciation is recognized in the first few years of its useful life and depreciation is calculated based on the sum of the years digit uh, for each year of its useful life like if, for example example if the asset useful life is five years some of the digit would be you know five plus four plus three plus two plus one so if the asset useful life is five uh, useful life is five years the sum of the digit would be six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one that's 21 right this were a couple of methods that one should understand and you should know about it while calculating the depreciation so that's it uh, for this particular topic if you have learned and enjoyed watching this video please like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates thank you everyone cheers